D D D D DJ DJ double Hi, it's DJ Double, and here today, I'm just chilling with my good friend right now, Big Dog. What's up, man? You know, like, Waka Flocka. He's the only person that I've ever met that's OD'd on weed. <laughs> tell, tell me about that, bro. What happened? They made up damn eddies, man. It's too much edibles, man. <laughs> the edibles are serious. I had to go, I seen the MLMs, like, IV, we put the vitamins back in. Mm. Restore the flame. You made history. The first person in the world to OD on weed. That's great. <laughs> so we're out in London right now. Yeah. Tell them about the London show. Massive. Massive. That's just, it's every show, man. It's just energy. Yeah. Like, it's just energy. I can tell London not used to have seen people perform. That's like people in general, not just London. Everywhere I go, you, people not used to people performing. Anymore. That's the difference between artists in, back in the days and artists today. Artists back in the day had to learn how to perform. Mm -hmm. Artists today just got glitz and glamorous, uh, big TV screens, confetti, lasers, lights. They don't know how to perform. No. I think the difference with your shows as well, you get fully involved. You're in the crowd and you're not there with 100 security keeping everyone off. You don't give a fuck. Like, you just. Because the energy real, man, the only way I could perform is if people could really, like, physically touch you. Or be right there because I feed off the energy. Mm. Now, if the crowd is 50 feet away from me, I can't perform it on. I just feel like I'm performing by myself. Yeah, yeah. Nah, no, I hear that. So, I think you're the first rapper to do like the whole EDM dance music thing into your sets. What made you choose EDM? Like, why go down that path? Uh, I just catered to my fans, people, not to the money. I just had so many fans from that genre. I'm like, sure, I need to add it to my show. Like, I have no choice. I don't know why I'm doing this for the for nobody else, it's just for the fans. I think when you perform, you're doing it for the fans. Mm. So if you got fans in the building that, you got 30 to 40% of the fans, they love rock and roll. I think you should learn to fucking rock and roll so you can entertain <laughs> your fans. So it wasn't even a tough choice for you, was it? Nah, it's for the fans, great. all for the fans, bro. Straight in, yeah, your the performances are a party, man. So like over, I'd say about like the last five years, it's kind of been like transitional for you. Maybe. Over the last three, while you've been on tour, I guess, obviously, you've seen the world, you've seen all these different festivals and that. What was it that sparked, like, the transition, you actually changing and going down this route where you've got mass appeal now? Oh, man, it's just, I'm a grown man. <coughs> it's like when you become a man and not just this guy saying I'm a man because I'm 21. Mm. You start seeing things different. Like, okay, how can I impact this way or what can I do? that I didn't do this time, or what did I do wrong that time? Just try some new shit. Like, I'm not afraid to do nothing new. Yeah. And once again, I just follow the fans. Like, them the people buying the music, the consumers. Like, I'm not trying to impress my friends or a label. I'm impressing my fans. My fans led me to where I'm at today. They're like, yo, I can go over here, bro. They love you over here. I'm like, word. I am checking out. Oh, shit, mom. I can do it. All right, it's easy. Let's go. Mm -hmm. That simple. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm in London, they... Yo, no, bro, they love you in the grime scene, man, trap shit, man. <laughs> bro, they love you over in South London, East London, West London, no fees. I'm going. Like, I'm, it's not that I'm, I'm trying to be hard gangsta. I'm, I'm going. I've been, been everywhere. I've been around some everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing I like about the Waka Flocka brand, you haven't released an album. You've done mixtapes, but not like an actual album. In four years. In four, nearly to the day. <laughs> June the 8th, 2012. Yeah. So it's nearly to the day in four years, but you've managed to stay relevant. So how how is that relevant? No radio, no TV. That's that's what I'm saying. No no, no radio spins. No way, no magazines. Fans, bro. Social media. Fans and social media. Do you think the reality TV, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, has that played a big part as well? Do you think it played a part in just knowing who I am as a person on a relationship wise, but. People know who I am. Oh. I don't have personality or no character. Do you like doing TV? Like that, that show in particular? Uh, I don't like shit. Local <laughs> family, friends, and sometimes money. Yeah. Sometimes money. Right. How, how much of your life does the show actually like intrude on? I, I've never seen it. I'm not even alive. I've me never me seen Love and Hip Hop. Me <laughs> only time I seen Love and Hip Hop when I was recording on fucking camera. <laughs> 
That's for women, bro. How how intrusive is it? I don't know. Nobody bothered me about it. Oh, so it's just it's just shooting in, yeah, in yeah, and yeah. out. And done. I'm done. Bro. It's over. Okay, okay. Stick a fork in. The main thing I want to ask you, Flock of Ellie Two. So we we've been waiting, and I know you're turning it into the label real soon. Like, firstly, what's the label situation around the album? Independent release or? Man, if I, was, if I was to tell you, I'd be a goddamn audio. Who knows? When I turn <laughs> in to the label, let's see what the fuck they do. So which label? Atlantic? Yeah. Right, okay, okay, okay. Um, what was with the delay of the album? I couldn't even tell you, bro. Because if I knew it, it wouldn't have been one. Right. Hey, man, the label being labels, man. It's, it's a long situation for you, isn't it? It is. It's, like, it's difficult with a label, man. Me and you signed to a label and I'm all I'm hot right now, but you got an album about to come out. Mm. They're not worried about your album. They worry about the nigga that's hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't care who you are, how big you are. What kind of deal do you have with them? Like, cause it can't be a three sixty. No, I got a good deal. A good deal. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm a free agent basically. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. smart. Your boy's a free agent. <laughs> um, I've heard you talk about it before. The fact that you've got no features on the album. This is just a hundred percent Waka Flocka. What's, what's behind that decision? It's not a compilation CD, it's an album. Even if I really won, that shit had full walker. Mm. And if I did, it was just my homies, like in the studio, fucking around, jumping yeah. on some music. Like, niggas don't want to hear no compilation CD, man. They want to hear the artist. They want that grimy shit. Man. So for you, it's more about getting your music out rather than. It's not even about money or sales, is it? It's just about because you could. What I'm saying is, you could quite easily drop another record with Drake, make that the first single. That's going straight on radio rotation everywhere, generate sales for the album. But like you don't want to do it. You want to just keep yourself on the album. Yeah, I'm gonna generate sales my damn thing. I don't need no album. I don't need it, bro. I'm alright. Mm. They can have it. Let's talk about producers on the album. Who's producing that? Uh, I got Southside producing. I got two new producers, Looney G. I got a guy named Super Mario. Just going hard, bro. Metro? Metro, oh yeah, yeah. fuck, I'm bugging. Metro and <laughs> Southside produced Dirty Bricks, it's 36. Yeah. Hard as fuck. That's it. What song are you most excited for people to hear? Uh, I want them to just hear the album. The whole thing? Y'all, this shit going crazy. They need to hear this. I'm happy they made me mad, bro. The only way I could make music is when I'm mad. I don't know why, because everything else, I, I got to tell you, I got to talk to you about the real shit. Mm. Talk to people like, yo, rap that real shit. How the fuck you gonna rap some real shit? You got to speak about it. Mm. I want you to hear the truth. Motherfuckers can't talk the truth. They can rap the truth. It's whack. I want you, I don't want to rhyme this shit. I want you to hear it. Yeah. So, when I see comments, like, when I see negative comments online about your music, it's mostly people saying, it relating to like in-depth interviews you do because you're a smart guy and, and the things that you talk about, the things, the way you articulate yourself. People, they're asking, why don't you make music like that? Like, I remember one point it's like, why don't you speak in hieroglyphics like Nas and, and, and stuff like that? No disrespect to Nas. Look, look what happened to Nas. Right. Do fans throw Nas on top? Mm. They don't give a fuck about you, bro. They don't. Look at uh, Schoolboy Q. He rap all that shit, right? Yeah. His shit sold 24K the first week. Right. And then people could play single. And then people will go, I see Top Dog talking about it. And people complain about it, Top Dog holding his music back. Y'all motherfuckers not buying it. Mm -hmm. how, how people complain about something they not buying? And when I do rap on some shit like that, they don't hear it. They don't give a fuck. People don't know what they want, man. They people cool with being called black and white. And that's the fucking adjective. It's not a human. People don't care, but they don't know what they want. They confuse people. Yeah, yeah, totally agree, man. Who you messing with from the UK? Man, I'm just fucking with the whole scene. You know who my man is, bro. We the big dog. I fuck with big dogs, man. Gigs, man. Mm. That's my guy. Man. Yeah. Before anything, bro, that's my nigga. Bro. Yeah. How did you connect with gigs in the first place? Because you, I mean, you've been recording music with gigs from. No, I, I know about gigs. I ain't gonna lie, bro. My first, that's like one of the first UK rappers I ever heard about. Mm. Jimmy and Real. Like, from my hood, it was like, hey, bro, this, this guy named Gigs, and it's another guy. It's Gigs and somebody else. Uh, uh, 
man, with somebody else. And back, I'm talking about like golden era, not today. Mm. It's like the pioneers. It was Giggs and somebody else. Wiley? I think it was Wiley and Giggs. I don't know. I don't know. But that's what I know about. So I had a, we had a neutral friend down, no Giggs. So I'm like, yo, call my boy. I pull up. Giggs pulled up and we just kicking shit. Like, he, he took me and shit called Nando's. He showed me like, one <laughs> day, like, you want to go to the hoods, bro? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. You sure? Motherfuckers don't want to go to the I'm like, nigga, let's go. And we just was kicking it. Like, it wasn't even no music shit. They yeah. got to the point like that nigga really was like a homo. And mm-hmm. that's when we like first had like a baby and shit. It's my boy. You know what I mean? Now you hear people like Skepta Nines. Mm. No, he's not. Yeah, Skepta Nines. Yes. Um, dead or alive, who would you most like to work with? The ultimate collaboration. Oh, I'd say DMX, Nines, Tupac. DMX, yeah. Yeah. Anyone outside of hip hop? Because you did a record with Stephen Marley recently. Yeah. I know when it comes, it comes, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you feel about when people ask you about your relationship with Gucci Mane? Because I know you don't really like talking about it, and with him coming out, it's another question that's going to be recycled. People ask you, oh, like, how do you feel when people ask you about it? I don't know. It's like somebody asks you, how do you take a shit? <laughs> Fuck you, I just sit and told put my pants down. <laughs> so, for future interviewers, it's a question you're trying to get away from, right? Nah, it's just like, are you like a girl? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> are you my bitch? Like, why are you asking me my, my personal questions? <laughs> I don't have, I don't do like internet love, like internet drama, like. Yeah. I don't have an internet wife. Like, I don't fuck with that. Anything in my personal life, I like, I don't try to keep it out. I don't try to hide. I just, I'm not trying to market it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you hear everybody say it, cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm in Europe. We just got out. Like, what the fuck could I do? Mm. Fly to America for one day, hug him, kiss him, do a song with him, and tell him I'm missing. Like, this nigga been going for two years. Like, what's a month and a half? Yeah. Nothing. No, I hear that. So while we're talking about all the stuff popping on the internet now, uh, I think it was last week, I saw all these tweets start popping up. What the fuck are locks children in cages? Can <laughs> 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 you explain that? These motherfuckers sound stupid, bro. That's my little niece. She's just bad as fuck, bro. Like, she always messing with the dog. Like She locked herself in a dog cage, right? And she couldn't get out. That shit was funny as hell. So I was like, you want me to bind you out? She's like, bind me! Like she was just funny, so and I got out of the cage, and then she touched the cage again. She's just bad as fuck. Where's just kids being kids? It's like it's like that internet, and these people don't want you to be human. It's like if you beat your kid ass, you go to jail. Like mm. fuck, that's not cool. Like, you should be able to whoop your kids ass. The like, kids need their ass whooped. Bro. <laughs> the government should be like, you can't hit kids. No, you shouldn't tell me what to do with my kid. As long as this motherfucker's not dying, you know how hard it's like. He needs his ass mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've, I've heard you talk as well about technology and analytics in in particular. So I know you, that you do, you're, you're moving towards that whole technology side because... I'm not, I've been doing tech for four years. Oh, okay. So no, tell just, me about it. What, what, about what are you doing exactly? Oh, shit, I ain't going to tell nobody what I'm doing. Okay? <laughs> I'm just in tech, baby. One thing about, I like about the tech world, you can't flex over there and act like you doing tech. Because, boy, it's some smart motherfuckers over there. Mm. And they can't wait till your rich ass come over there trying to fit your capital. Can't wait. That's why I love the tech world. Full of gangster nerds. I love it. Gangster nerds. Is there more money in tech than music? Oh, it's more money in tech than anything in the world. Mm. My opinion. That's my little opinion. Interesting, man. Uh, it ain't about the money. It's just about doing great shit in tech. It's like you have the freedom of doing anything. It's like you can fly in technology. It's like you can speak 40 languages in technology if you want to. It's just fun. No yeah. limits. It, it literally is. That shit, that's really nice to be. Yeah. So what's, the, what's, what's going on for the rest of 2016? I'm touring. I'm touring. I'm dropping music and I'm touring. That's what's up. That's all. Been a pleasure, man. Stunt, man. <laughs>
DJ Double, I'm with Waka Flocka. We're out of here. DJ, 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 DJ,